This time we are going to model a weird computer mouse, focusing on objects with more organic shapes. Let's also learn how to work with references. To start, just drag and drop them into plasticity. Let's scale them appropriately and use Rotate tool to put them in place. Select References, press M to change the way they are rendered. If you select Front, they will be always visible on top of the objects, even if they are behind. Adjust the opacity. Oops, forgot one. Let's do it again for it. The problem we have right now is that they are misaligned. So select one reference and scale the default cube to match it. Now that the cube represents the correct height, scale the second reference to match it. With the third one, let's learn one more thing. Freestyle scale. After you press S to scale, press F for freestyle. Set two points and now move the second one while the first one stays in place. Click scale uniformly. While freestyle tools are rarely needed, and in this example it uh, could have been done with normal scale with custom pivot, it's a good thing to know how to use freestyle because in some situations it will really save you. Oops, we made a mistake. Shouldn't have rotated the front face. Not a big deal, it's really easy to fix. Just cut it. Also let's learn freestyle rotate. Imagine our reference wasn't aligned. Match the edge first, now the same thing as with scale, set two points, you move the second one, while the first one stays in place. There is also freestyle move, but it's a bit simpler, you just set one point and then you move it wherever you want. Let's group our references and lock the folder so we don't move them by accident. Go to the side view, now use curve tool to trace the top. Great, now duplicate it and move to the side. Let's now scale it and move so our lowest ends are on the same level. You can also start to drag a point and then hold ALT to move the whole curve proportionally. Duplicate it and put on the other side and slightly change it to have more asymmetry. Let's adjust the reference opacity. One didn't adjust, because remember how we forgot it at the beginning and added the render setting for it after the first two? Because of it, it's not linked. To link it, do the same thing as you would do with materials. Drag and drop the material with needed render settings onto it. Great, let's adjust the curves from other angles. Time to loft them. Select them one by one and press L to loft. The edges are not quite good, so let's create guidelines. Use Curve tool and put the curve uh, through points on the ends. Now, when doing a loft, if we don't confirm it, we can hold Shift and click on our guides to use them. This way it looks much better. We can also scale it sideways, in case we need to extend it at some point later. Now the quickest way to make a solid out of that sheet would be to extrude it. Press E and then set the pivot vertically and extrude it down. To flatten the bottom, instead of cutting it, we can just scale the face on Z axis. While it's not optimal here, let me give you an example. In case we would need a vertical chamfer on the back, in some other situations we could uh, duplicate the curve, offset it. The problem is that it's too small to cut with. Let's extend it then. Select both ends and use extend. Hmm, doesn't work. It's because our curve is not really a curve. It's still a predefined line and if we want to work with it properly, we have to use rebuild. Adjust the tolerance. Now it's a proper curve defined by control points. This time, if we select the ends, we can use extend and try different settings. It's good, but it's not perfect. And to be fair, in this situation, making it perfect is even easier. Let's delete it. Move the bottom face a bit higher and then extrude it down. Perfect. Now we can fill the edges. Let's make the sides a bit more organic. Draw a curve for the side the usual way for people to integrate it into the shape would be to cut with it and then refill it the edges. But we have a better solution. Extrude it up to create a sheet, and then match the side face of the mouse to the extended sheet. This way, fillets readjust and we don't have to remake anything. Using offset to slightly adjust it, same thing on the other side, and on the front. Oops, accidentally bend it upwards. But honestly, doesn't matter as long as you extrude it upwards. Match the face the same way. Time to work on the buttons. Draw a line that would split a half of the top for them. Shift I to imprint. Select the face, E for extrude, set the pivot vertically and press B to extrude it as a new body. Now boolean the buttons out of the body. Let's assign a red color for them. Fill it the sides. Let's now rotate the face below the buttons and press W for world space gizmo orientation. Too bad I can't see the buttons. Let's go back and press Alt Z for X-ray. It doesn't move very smoothly. I think the fillet is the problem. Let's remove it for now. Great, now it works much better. 
When adjusting the front face, our fillets kind of broke away from the buttons, no problem. Delete it and refill it using the bottom ones as references. Time to do the wheel. Draw center symmetrical rectangle from the top, extrude it down, boolean it out of the mouse and the buttons. Let's now use cylinder tool to snap it on the other side as a new body. Great, let's adjust it now. Oops, we made a mistake to scale it uniformly. Let's use the plane scaling gizmo instead, quickly adding a separation between the buttons. Okay, a problem. Can't fillet those. What do I do? I just cut the model in three parts, do the fillet and then boolean it back together. While more elegant methods exist, there is no need not to do it this way. Since it's so universal, easy and fast, you don't even have to think about it too much. Let's add some roundness to the wheel, chamfer both sides. Delete the face in the middle and fillet the sharp edge. Now, if you want to adjust it, you can just select the face and scale it on one axis. I think we need to move the wheel sideways. Let's select all the faces and move. Because we selected the fillets on the curved face, they started to detach when moved horizontally. You can fix it by moving the face with them. Maybe we could adjust the whole top. Nah, that's going to be too much hassle to fix the back later. Let's give the wheel some texture. For that, I'm going to side view, horizontal line from the center, now rotate it and press Shift I to imprint. Let's draw a line from its center, then move it back so it would cover the whole wheel. Select the projected edge. Shift space to create custom work plane. Now we can use its coordinates to Alt X mirror it. Imprint again. If you pipe as is, it's not going to cut all the way through. And in some scenarios, if we manually extend it, it would give us weird reflections on the surface. Not actually a thing in this case, but in general, I would always try to do something about it. So let's go back a bit. Uh, Shift D duplicate the wheel. Now with uh, it selected, also select the sketches and isolate. Let's make it wider and offset the outside face since it would be nice uh, not to have pipes go that deep into the wheel. Project. Now duplicate it to have it as a sketch. Now go back to the original wheel with it. Select the curves, P for pipe, adjust the diameter. If we boolean them together, it would be easier to calculate the subtraction later. Instead of rectangular array, this time we're going to use a circular one. Just select the center of the wheel and adjust the amount of copies. Now select the wheel, select the pipes and Q for boolean. A bit too deep. Let's go back a few steps. Can't offset faces with the booleaned one. So one more step back. Now, if you press something and lose the offset gizmo, you can always look for it in the F search as offset face. Repeat the array and boolean operations. I think it's still a bit too deep. Maybe there is some other way to fix it. There is. Duplicate the wheel. Now delete all the boolean shapes. If they don't delete, try some other selection. It's quicker to just do random stuff until it deletes than to actually think and carefully select the faces. I'm gonna shift X delete the side faces to have it as a sheet and then you can offset the edges, creating more surface. Okay, you don't have to do it all. You can just use it as a solid. Just wanted to show you, you can offset sheet edges like that. Now we can use it as a cutter. Really don't like these small edges on the sides. They might cause us some problems in case we would want to adjust something near them. So you guessed it, delete them. Let's create a Boolean box for the side buttons. Adjust the faces. Control R on the button. Move it in, match face, and then match the other one to the fillet. Time to do the buttons. I want the top line to follow the face below the buttons, so I have an idea. Let's duplicate the mouse body. Isolate it and then delete the top part. Great. Duplicate the faces on the button cutout. Scaling it to flatten doesn't work, so Alt-click to select the edge around it and duplicate it. Now we can finally scale it on one axis to flatten it. You can notice the blue fill. It means our sketch is planar, and we can offset the edges. I'm gonna draw a rectangle to put a gap in between buttons. Now we can extrude them. If we now want to do two intersects at the same time but keeping the mouse body, we need to first press Q, press select tool bodies and click on the mouse. Then press select target bodies and shift click on the buttons. Honestly, in this case, I would just do it one by one. But what if you had to do a hundred buttons? Think about it. Trying to control Alt, click on the edges to select the ring, but because of the complex topology, it doesn't quite work. So I just select them manually. Gonna set the fillet type to chortle to get a more consistent look. 
time to chamfer. A problem again, as we select the edges and set the chamfer to apex, trying to keep the width consistent, the angle adjustment is swapped on them. That's a common cut problem, and since we can't just mirror them, you have to experiment with what edges you select before the chamfer. This fixed it. Let's do a small power indicator on the front. Cut the cylinder in halves. Extrude the flat side. To fillet the edges into spheres, start the fillet and then click on the cylinder itself to use it as a fillet reference. A chamfer here. Time to do a USB connector. Two edge offsets and then face offset the middle one. I want to visually support the shape a bit more. I have an idea. Let's cut the body using the face on the connector. Now we can alt click and offset the faces. And then merge back with QQ. I think it ended up being huge. Let's select all the faces there and scale them. Great. Let's chamfer the top with two limits. If we fill it now, we won't be able to adjust it later since it's a fillet with one side connected to a curved surface. So let's adjust it first. Now fill it. Again, because there is only one edge, we can use scale, but we can't scale both at the same time. So I'm gonna use the same numerical value for scale twice. Let's do some screws on the bottom. For more interesting shape, I draw a sphere from the center of the other side of the screw and then match the face. Okay, time for a new tool, place. Select the object and press Ctrl D. Now select the point you want to use to align a copy of it. Now select the point you want to align it to. Press F to flip. You can adjust the depth, rotation and even do the boolean right away. Right click to confirm. And another one to stop duplicating. Okay, we are done, but I mean, I don't really like the shape of the mouse. It's surely too late to change it at this point, right? Let's try. Duplicate the body and then clean it up. Duplicate the side edges to make them curves. Now draw a couple of straight lines, project them, rebuild. Now we can adjust them. Use Curve tool to draw the guides the same way we did before. Loft. Now you can move it back in place and match all the needed faces to it. Here, before we match the buttons, we have to offset the bottom first. Otherwise, we will make a huge hole in the middle, making it harder to edit after. Now that the top part is matched, we can offset the face of our new surface to use it as a reference for the button's bottom. Time to adjust the LED. Now, because we can't rotate the top, let's try deleting fillets on the corners to see if it helps. It does. Now we can fillet it back using the thing itself as a reference. As you probably noticed, this time a lot of things didn't go as planned, and we used a lot of workarounds. I think the way you fix your mistakes is very important and constantly gets overlooked. Imagine real work. You have to model something you obviously haven't modeled before. You are surely going to make some mistakes, and I really hope my examples will help you to have the right strategy for fixing them. And about the workarounds. Some people might not like this approach, but let me tell you, even when we had to use a workaround, it was still faster than intended ways in other software, so does it really matter? Be creative, experiment, just try to keep the topology clean so it would encourage further experiments instead of fighting with errors. Oh,